Hello, this is Shay Jackson with Hype Math and Reading. In today's video, we will be reviewing for the 2022 Texas Star Math Test for fourth graders. Our concept is fractions. This is part one. Remember fourth graders, if you're always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be. We have our fourth grade star math and reading review workbooks available for purchase in our store. The link is in the description box so that you can grab yours today. Do you need a math or reading tutor? We offer virtual one-on-one -on -one and group tutoring for second to eighth grade students. Parents, you can click the link in the description box to request a free 30-minute consultation. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell, and smash that like button so that you will be alerted to new videos. And also, you can help us out by spreading the word about hype, math, and reading. We greatly appreciate your support. So let's talk about fractions, and we'll go over the basics first. Here, let's look at our top, the top of our chart first. We have a pentagon, which has a total of five parts, okay? One, two, three, four, five parts in total, and there are two that are shaded. So our fraction is two over five. A few ways that we can read this fraction is two-fifths, two out of five or two divided by five because the fraction bar just means division, okay? Now let's look at the bottom row. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine circles with shapes in them or some type of object, okay? We are going to focus on the circles with the stars in them. Again, nine total parts. And focusing on the ones with stars in them, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven circles with stars in them. So our fraction is seven over nine. Now, a few ways we can read this fraction is seven ninths, seven out of nine, or seven divided by nine. Now let's take a look at equivalent fractions. So equivalent fractions are fractions that have different numerators and denominators, but they equal the same amount. Let's look at our example. If you see at the top, we have one fourth and then we have two different one eighths or two eighths, and then it's even divided more by four groups of one sixteenth, which is four sixteenths, right? Well, you may be asking yourself, well, how did we get that? Great question. So let's look at our bottom row where we're showing we're multiplying. In order for us to get two eighths, what we need to do is multiply the numerator and denominator by two. Remember fourth graders, whenever you're trying to find an equivalent fraction, you always must multiply or divide the numerator and denominator by the same number, okay? So in this example, we have two over two. When we multiply our numerators going across, one times two is equal to two, four times two is equal to eight, and that is how we have two eighths, and it is an equivalent fraction, again, of one fourth. Now, let's look and see how we got four sixteenths, or four over sixteenth. Again, we are multiplying one fourth, and now we need to multiply the numerator and denominator by four. Once we do that, we're going to multiply our numerators going across. One times four is equal to four. Four times four is equal to 16. And that is how we have the equivalent fraction of four over 16. Let's talk a little bit more about equivalent fractions. In the same way we can multiply 
to get equivalent fractions, we can also divide. Most times it's called simplifying the fraction or reducing the fraction, okay? So in our example, we're looking at our top row first. We have six over 24. Now, in order for us to reduce or simplify our fraction to find the equivalent fraction, we need to ask ourselves, what is the greatest common factor, which means the highest number that both the numerator and denominator can go into evenly, and that is six, okay? Six can go into six evenly, obviously, and also six can go into 24 evenly. So we're going to divide again our numerator and denominator by the same number. Dividing our numerators across, 6 divided by 6 is equal to 1. 24 divided by 6 is equal to 1, I mean, is equal to 4. And that is how we have 1 fourth as an equivalent fraction of 6 over 24. Let's look again add another fraction, an equivalent fraction of one fourth. We have two eighths and we went over that in our um, previous slide. We have two eighths. This time we're going to divide by two over two. Again, you must uh, divide or multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number. So I keep saying multiply. Dividing our numerators going across, two divided by two is equal to one, eight divided by two is equal to four, and that is how two eighths and one fourth are equivalent fractions. Let's look at four over 16. Again, in the previous slide, we multiplied, but now we're going to divide, okay? Because we're starting off with four over 16. We are dividing the numerator and denominator by four. Let's divide our numerators going across. Four divided by four is equal to one, and 16 divided by four is equal to four. So again, that is how we can see one fourth and four over 16 are equivalent fractions. Let's look at our second row, and all we're doing is showing how an equivalent fraction is multiplied to get the fraction and also divided. We're starting off with one fifth and we are multiplying our numerator and denominator by three. Multiplying our numerators across, one times three is equal to three, five times three is equal to 15. And so a equivalent fraction of one fifth when we multiply by three is three over 15. In the same way, we're starting with three over 15. Now we're dividing three over three, okay? Dividing our numerators first, three divided by three is equal to one. 15 divided by three is equal to five and one fifth. Again, we're starting with our equivalent fraction. Let's go to the right hand side. We're starting off with one third and we're multiplying our numerator and denominator by 10 over 10. Multiplying our numerators going across, one times 10 is equal to 10, three times 10 is equal to 30. So an equivalent fraction of one third is 10 over 30. Now let's we're starting with 10 over 30. We're going to simplify our fraction. And again, we're going to divide by 10 over 10, dividing our numerators going across. 10 divided by 10 is equal to 1. 30 divided by 10 is equal to 3, okay? So that is how we get equivalent fractions by multiplying and dividing. A key to remember, fourth graders, is whenever you are multiplying or dividing a number by the numerator, the same number has to be multiplied or divided in the numerate, denominator, vice versa, okay? So let's talk now about comparing and ordering fractions. One thing we need to remember is that the alligator mouth, which is the inequality sign, 
always opens up to the largest number, okay? So in our left-hand side, we have three fours is equal to six eighths. And you can see with our shapes, even though that the um, squares are broken up into four and also into eight, the shaded part looks the same. And again, we could find the equivalent fraction and show that six eighths is an equivalent fraction of three fourths by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by two. Three times two is six, four times two is equal to eight. That is how we can see three fourths is equal to six eighths. But now let's look at two thirds and two fourths, okay? Since our denominators are different, what we need to do is find a common, uh, common denominator or, or least common multiple or least common denominator. Those are some of the terms you will hear when your denominators are different and you need to find the least common multiple or least common denominator. So, in order for us to find the least common multiple of three and four, an easy way to do it is multiply three times four, and that is 12. Okay, so now that we have our least common denominator, we need to make our equivalent fractions. We're gonna start with two thirds, okay? And what since we know that our new denominator is 12, what I need to ask myself is, what number multiplied by three is equal to 12? And it is four. So I'm going to multiply the denominator and the numerator by four, okay? In order for me to find my equivalent fraction with the denominator of 12. Multiplying our numerators going across, two times four is equal to eight, three times four is equal to 12. So my equivalent fraction of two thirds is eight twelfths, okay? Now let's look at two fourths. We need to do the same thing. We now know that our fraction, I'm sorry, our denominator will be 12. So I need to ask myself, what number multiplied by four is equal to 12 and it is Three. So I'm going to multiply my denominator and numerator by three. Multiplying our numerators going across, two times three is equal to six. Four times three is equal to 12. So my equivalent fraction of two fourths is six twelfths. Now that both fractions have the same denominator, all I need to do is focus on the numerators, okay? Two thirds has a numerator of eight, two fourths has a numerator of six. We know that eight is greater than six, so my alligator mouth of my inequality sign opens up to the eighth, and eight twelfths is greater than six twelfths, which means two thirds is greater than two fourths. Now that we've reviewed, let's dive into our problem. And again, you can purchase the fourth grade math review workbook in our store. Number 18 says, the models are shaded to represent two fractions. Which statement correctly compares these two fractions? Is it A, 5 sixths is greater than 6 twelfths? B, 5 sixths is equal to 6 twelfths? C, 5 6 is less than 6 twelfths, or D, none of the above. In order to solve this problem, the first thing we need to do is ask ourselves, what are we looking for, okay? What are we looking for? We are looking for the statement that correctly compares the two fractions, okay? We are looking for the statement correctly comparing the two fractions. Well, now that I know what I'm looking for, the next thing I need to do is find out what information can help me find the answer, okay? What information can help me find the answer? The information that can help me find the answer, number one is that 
I need to find a least common denominator or least common multiple because if you notice, my denominators are different. So the least common denominator of six and 12 is equal to 12. Well, since um, six twelfths already has a 12 in the denominator, all I need to do now is find the equivalent fraction of five six where there's a denominator of 12 and look on the right hand side it's highlighted in blue we have to ask ourselves what number multiplied by 12 is uh multiplied by six is equal to 12 and the answer is two i'm going to multiply my denominator and my numerator by two now I can multiply my numerators going across. Five times two is equal to 10. Six times two is equal to 12. So my equivalent fraction for fifth, five, six is 10 twelfths, okay? That is the information that can help me find my answer. Now, how do I solve this problem? Well, in order to solve the problem, I need to compare 10 twelfths and 6 twelfths. Now, since I have denominators that are the same, all I need to do is focus on the numerators. One numerator is 10, one numerator is six. And remember, the alligator mouth always opens up to the largest number, okay? So what is our correct answer? Since we know that 10 is greater than six, now I need to look at my answer choices to see, and it's not going to have 10 twelfths as you see fourth graders, our original fraction was five six. Okay. So it would be five six is greater than six twelfths. So looking at my answer choices, do you see the correct answer? If you said a, you're absolutely correct. 5 6 is greater than 6 twelfths. And that is it for Fractions Review Part 1. Again, if you need a tutor, click the link in the description box, parents, to sign up for a free 30 minute consultation. And we have our fourth grade math and reading review workbooks available for purchase in our store. This is Shay Jackson with Hype Math and Reading. I will talk to you later.